just gonna see. Okay, so I think that we are live. It looks like it. So if anyone is here right now with us live, if you guys just want to give this video a like, and if you want to just come and say hi in the comments, that way I know that you guys can both hear and see us. So I'm just going to check. Okay, perfect. Good morning, Linda. Okay, awesome. Okay, so Demantis, so happy and grateful to have you here. We're gonna dive into mm -hmm. gut health, talk Chinese medicine, and, and all that good stuff. So again, so happy to, to have you here. Hi, Anna, and thank you for having me. Yeah. My pleasure. Good. So um, I'm thinking I know that some people that are here with us live know you from before, but I know we also have some, some new people. Um, so um, if we just start with, if you just want to uh, briefly introduce yourself. Sure. Um, well, before I started my academic uh, journey, I was playing basketball professionally in Sweden and abroad. And I did that until I didn't until I realized that I wasn't living my dream. So I started studying and first I studied a type of manual medicine, which is called naprapathy, uh, which is very similar to chiropractic. Mm. Uh, and even during the education, I, uh, I wanted to be able to treat uh, internally as well. And so I was thinking of either becoming an MD in Sweden or starting to become a doctor in Chinese medicine. And because of Chinese medicine, it's more appealing the philosophy to me. So mm. I told my wife to that we are moving to China. <laughs> <laughs> How was her reaction to to that? <laughs> oh, she, she wasn't surprised because mm. uh, she, she knew me, and um, and already she knew that I was very interested in the type of holistic health approach. Right. And so we just decided, you know, it wasn't so hard. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's always nice when it's easy like that. Exactly. <laughs> then I feel like you kind of know that it's the right path when things are, you know, easy like that. It's kind of like, okay, this is the this is exactly. the way to go. Yeah. Exactly. Well, for many it wasn't it was very strange and it was very, you know, big step, but for us right. it was just moving over there, you know, doing the practical stuff and then starting school. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And for those who are very new to the term Chinese medicine, so what exactly does that entail? So Chinese medicine is a type of medicine, medical system or medical model, mm. which is one among med many models. Like we have Ayurvedic medicine, which is one model, and then we have homeopathic. And what we know as medicine today, or the Western type of medicine, is actually called allopathic medicine. So it's just another type of medicine, um, right. looking at the body in a little bit, a different way in a holistic way mm -hmm. and right. we're always talking about the branch which is the symptoms and also the root which is the root cause of the problem right and our main treatment methods are herbs and acupuncture right and mm -hmm. so if we talk about if we go into gut health and from a you know Chinese medicine perspective so if we start a bit like umbrella view in terms of diet and if there are any specific herbs like what you know in your opinion what will be the the kind of the best diet and if there are any specific herbs for you know um having better gut health or you know if you have a damaged gut um you know in, in terms of healing as well yeah so chinese medicine how it was developed because it had been around for like 5,000 5, years, is that uh, the physicians back then started observing people and started collecting information and they start seeing different kind of patterns in people. Mm. And the very early, you know, in the same way, wherever you look, you know, a very ancient type of medicine, they always put the gut health in the center. Right, and yeah. So we have, we have a, um, the first, the most simple type of theory in Chinese medicine is the term of yin and yang, which can distinguish, you know, you can put two things and then see how they two are related to each other. Mm. But then if you want to go a little bit deeper, then you go into five element theory, 
Right. The five element theory, the five main organs are the liver, the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, and we say the spleen. But in the spleen, we also, we, we talk about the stomach and gut health. Mm. Yes. So the most common uh, uh, symbol of the five elements are like a circle with all the five elements around it. Right. But the ancient one had the stomach in the middle. And we have mm -hmm. the heart above and the kidney below. One side was the liver and the other side was the lungs. Right. Got it. And actually, what I, I, I prefer that type of model because yeah. it really puts an emphasis that the stomach and gut health are, are in the center. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. really interesting. I know we talked a little bit before we started this, like how, you know, also gut health feels so central to health in general. Like if we actually focus on our gut health and if we heal the gut, a lot of other things just seem to kind of <laughs> fall in place with our health as well. Yeah. But let's start, let's start further back. Let's start yeah. with uh, maybe what are the ideal circumstances for somebody to have a good gut health? Right. Okay. And so we can start uh, because a gut problem is always included in almost any type of chronic problem. Yeah. Because, as we say, it always starts in the gut. That's why it's in the center. So what are the ideal circumstances for a person which is born uh, to get a, a good gut health? Mm. So first of all, we hope that the person is, uh, um, is born vi uh, through the vagina and not C-section. Mm. Because uh, the flora around the 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 birth canal will will become the first floor of the child right and for everyone listening if for any circumstances you can't do a vaginal birth then there is something called vaginal seeding which means that you the 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 doctor takes a sterile compress and put it in the in the birth canal mm -hmm. and then when the child comes out through c-section then you take that one and then you wipe it everywhere, and so it doesn't miss that opportunity. Right. Yeah. So second is then obviously breastfeeding. So through breastfeeding and as long as possible, as long as the mother can, um, that will become the gut flora of the child because there are so many, uh, n so much nutrients mm. in, in the milk. Yes. And also the different kind of uh, bacteria like lactobacillus and so on. Right. Now the the gut flora, you should see it, the microbiome, you should see it as a landscape. So you want diversity. Hey, wherever you look in nature, wherever there is diversity, there is life. Mm. So if you see like the Amazon, the rainforest, the more diversity, the more life there is. You can look uh, in the ocean, in the Great Burial Reef in Australia. You know, the more life, yeah. the more diversity, the more life. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And we have the biggest microbiome is in our guts. Right. And the landscape is more or less set until three years old. Mm. So we want uh, to avoid any type of exposure that will disturb that sequence or, or that opportunity and one of them is antibiotics mm. you know yep. it's as it sounds it's anti-bios anti-life right. what we want is life and this is against life so it yeah. kills everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> right so if it's possible to avoid any type of antibiotic before three years old it's amazing yeah so this is like the cornerstones the the pillars the great pillars for for the beginning of life right now, we have different kind of microbiomes, you know, it's not only the gut. We have mm. the skin, we have in the, you know, in the eye, uh, ears, we have in the lungs and so on. And the most amazing is that all these microbiomes actually communicate with each other. And um, scientists are, are now trying to figure out, you know, how they are communicating with each other and what does it mean to our health. Right. Yes. So let's continue then. After three years old, what is happening, mm. you know? The most important thing, um, there is an over-focus when it comes to gut health, you know, what you eat. Yeah. 
and everybody's talking about you know you should eat this or you should eat that and this type of supplements or that supp supplements and herbs and so on mm -hmm. and everything has its right place in the right time but the most important thing of all is to understand that the whole digestive system is a parasympathetic function you know so the nervous system has two functions we call them like on off uh, and you you're all you're either in one of them or the other one you cannot be in both of them at the same time one of them we call them fight or flight and it's your sympathetic part of your nervous system and the other one is your parasympathetic which is rest digest detoxify rejuvenate rebuild mm. health can only exist when we are in the parasympathetic part of the nervous system right it's impossible to heal if you are in sympathetic now through evolution the sympathetic part of your nervous system was developed because of external threats like there was a wolf or a tiger or whatever mm. and your whole body was uh, trying to find out a solution how to get out of there the blood was pumped out to the muscles to just run away and during this type of circumstances the the body doesn't prioritize the gut health obviously right. yes but now what have happened is nowadays this external wolf have become an internal mm -hmm. and so we are chronically stressed and everybody's telling me that they are so stressed they have so much to do and stress 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 and when i ask them what is stress uh, there are not many people that know what stress is actually mm -hmm. stress is an internal thing it's not an external thing right so if I don't have stress within me, then nothing outside cannot stress me. And so what is this internal conflict which we call stress? It all boils down to the stress of becoming, to the psychological becoming. So if I, gr if I grow up in a family where I'm not seeing, I'm not given the attention I need, uh, I'm not respected based on my opinions and the way I want to express myself and I'm formed into a mold mm. to become somebody or something then the child's interpretation will be that there is something wrong with me got it yep yes so these circumstances what they do is that they they take my right or they take my ability to be my authentic self mm. to be authentic self it means that body mind spirit is aligned whatever whatever i feel i say whatever i desire i try to do and it's not the type of desire like in the psychological becoming in a desire to be somebody to make a career or something in order to get the approval mm. But, but it's, it's very direct and it's very spontaneous. Right. And we see this in children, you know, because when you ask a child, why do you play? They don't understand the question. There is, <laughs> there, there is yeah. no agenda behind the play. Yeah. The whole meaning with the play is the play itself. Yeah. And in that moment, there is no separation between the play and the player. Mm. So everything there is, there is just play right and then we can look at adults and we can ask um, you can ask any adult whatever they're doing ask them why are you doing this mm. and there's always an agenda yes if there is an agenda it means that it that exists in the future hopefully so in my practice i see even the most so-called spiritual people you know doing yoga and having yoga studios and you know, meditating, and mm. they say, Diamantes, you know, I'm meditating every morning, I'm doing my Kabbalah Bhattis and my Bastrikas, and I'm doing my poses and so on. And I ask them, why? Yes, because I want to take my nervous system over to the parasympathetic part and so on. But why is your nervous system in the sympathetic in the first place? Mm. You see, I'm not saying that all these techniques are bad, you know, they're wonderful. But, you know, try to understand also why is your nervous system in the sympathetic why are you chronically stressed right yes so 
we can work on our gut health mm. as you know all our life if we don't understand the the most fundamental parts of what that system needs in order to function you know we will never be allowing the right circumstances for the body to heal itself right right and I'm thinking about, you know, people that come to you and they say, you know, you mentioned all the people come and they say that they're very stressed. Like what, yeah. like as a first step, like what will be some of the things that you would advise people to do to kind of, you know, figure out, first of all, like how to actually manage that stress and how do you, um, you know, figure out how to get to, you know, that parasympathetical um, place? Yes. Very good question, Anna. Uh, but first we... As we say, with a patient, I need to address what stress is mm -hmm. and who is the stressor. Right. You see, <laughs> the person is the stressor. Mm. When you become presence, when you stop fighting, when you stop trying, because we're trying. We're trying to do the right thing. We're trying to love ourselves. We're trying to fix ourselves. Mm. The body doesn't want, need you to fix it. And when I say you or me, I'm referring to the idea I have of who I think I am. Mm. Right. This is the whole psychological becoming, you know. It's just create the circumstances for the body and then just li leave it. You know, right. it will do all the rest. Yeah. Uh, we, have this, we have this thinking of that I'm going to fix the body. Mm. Yes. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's, it's very ironic, actually, if you think about it, you know, yeah. I, the intellect, I, the idea of who I am with all my knowledge, which I have read about, you know, through books or listening to your uh, YouTube lives mm. or all this, you know, <laughs> yeah. that I will fix myself. Mm. You no, know? even me, you know, I've studied medicine for 10 years. I tell yeah. all my patients, I'm not, I can't fix you, you know. Mm. It's very arrogant to say that I'm going to fix you. Yeah. So what we're doing, we're creating the circumstances for the body to heal itself. Right. Yes, this is so yeah. simple. Yeah. So who is the stressor? The stressor in the psychological becoming, which means that I am the idea who I think I am, mm. which most of the times is something which I'm not good enough. I'm not... Uh, strong enough, I'm not good looking enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not everything that we're lacking. Right. You know? So, and this actually, pro this problem is not that we only come from a dysfunctional family, uh, which creates this core beliefs that mm -hmm. I'm not good enough, which later on will develop a, a unconscious type of uh, behavior, one practical and one psychological. You know, and the practical will be that you're constantly fighting, trying to become somebody. Mm. And the psychological is how you deal with these feelings of not being good enough. How you resonate, right. you know, how you deal with emotions. Somebody tells you something and you take it very personally, you know, and you react instantaneously. And you cannot just, so you have also a very immature uh, you're very immature emotionally mm. and psychologically, and everything is black and white. Right. And through this, we become also very aggressive. Yeah. Yes. And uh, this type of behavior exists also within different kind of areas within society. And also when it comes to food. Mm. We tend to, <laughs> when mm. we read about a book and we say, okay, I am a paleo diet, I follow paleo diet, or I follow a plant-based diet, or I follow a whatever diet, you know, it's almost that we go out and, uh, and say to everyone that this is who I am. And I identify myself with what I eat. Right. And I think that is a big problem because um, it's almost like intellectually, we read some books and we say, ah, this is the right way because it says here in the books, but then it can go years. First of all, we feel some kind of honeymoon phase, mm. you know, because we cut out all the sugars and so on. 
uh, all the refined starches and all the fast food and so on and only that creates uh, the circumstances the body to function much better you know it's an sure. anti-inflammatory diet mm. but then you know it comes a dip it starts you start going down because you just you're not eating what your body needs and according right. to the seasons you know yeah so there is not the most important part to know about diet there is no one diet yeah <laughs> Yeah, and you said like with seasons. Are you thinking like when when foods are in season and kind of try to adapt to to that? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. First of all, so it's a little bit mixed because now as humans we have migrated all over the planet. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> but we also need to know the genetic part is one part, but there also the demographic part, mm. so where you live, and according to the season, and up. It's very common up here in, in the north that people go over to a plant-based diet. And yeah. it's wonderful, you know, if your body can handle it, you know. If you have this constitution that your body can handle it. But if your constitution is that you actually need, during the winter months, a little bit of red meat, then it's not personal, you know. Mm. Because then you, your body will uh, get troubled by that. Right. On the other hand, you know, if your body is a very, we say in Chinese medicine, a young orientated type, you know, mm. you have a lot of heat within you, you're not cold, uh, in, even summer times, you know, uh, you're too hot, yeah. then definitely not, you should not eat meat because it's too hot, Right. you know, Right. but winter time, if you're very cold all the time and you have loose stools and uh, you're shivering, you mm. know, you only actually desire to drink uh, warm water and so on. All this is signs that you are too cold within. And in Chinese medicine, we say meat, especially red meat, like um, uh, cow and lamb. Lamb is the most warm one. Right. And it's actually, when I recommend meat, I recommend lamb, nothing else. Mm. Okay. Yes. Right. So it's really kind of coming down to learning how to listen to your body and what your body needs exactly yeah exactly yeah you cannot force your body to act away right yeah mm. because ultimately it must be that the body wants to the body wants to be healed it wants to be healthy exactly <laughs> yes. right yeah. yeah yeah we would never exist you know if we didn't have this self-healing mechanism within us right Right. But it can only do the work, you know, if it has the right circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and Demet, I know that you talk also about, I think over on, on your Instagram, I saw, you know, different different feelings are kind of connected, related to, to different organs in, in the body. Exactly. So yes. are there certain feelings that are more kind of related and connected to the, to the gut area? Yes. So we say, let's take all of the five organs and say mm -hmm. which one's connected to which. Okay, so the heart is connected to joy. Mm. And the lung is connected to sadness. The stomach is connected to worry. Mm. We say, over worry injures the stomach and spleen. Mm. And if you think about it, if you really worry, then it feels like a knot in the stomach. Yeah. You don't have any appetite, no desire to eat. Now, the kidneys, which also includes the adrenal glands, are related to fear. Mm. So, and, and we know that fear is one of the most destructive feelings we can, we can experience. Right. Because it, con it's absolutely, it consumes your energy through the adrenal glands. And the adrenal glands, you know, are the basis of more than 50 different types of hormones in your body. Right. Now, the liver is connected to stress. Uh, frustration, uh, irritability, anger. And um, so how do we see this within the psychological becoming also so we, so we can see the part and why so many have a stomach problems today. So if, we're, if we are growing up in a dysfunctional family, which is not only that we, our authentic self is cannot be expressed and mm -hmm. we and we develop core beliefs that I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I'm not lovable, mm. 
then I start coming into the psychological becoming. But there's also another part which is very important to understand is that the whole infrastructure of our society today is based on social Darwinism and consumerism, which means that in theory, in the belief that nature is very aggressive and opportunistic to eat or be eaten, you know, yeah. then we have applied that model in economics today in our society, which means that uh, if I, with my company, can uh, make sure that everybody else go bankrupt in, my, in the same field, I have the right to do that. Right. But nature doesn't work like this. Now, at the same time, we are looking at and promoting a type of personality in, the, in our society, which is very young orientated, which means extroverted. You see, we talked about diver biodiversity, and there is also an energy-based diversity within all of us. Mm. And is the, we have very young-orientated people and very yin-orientated people. Right. And just to generalize, you know, this yin and yang orientated is not is more the masculine and the feminine, and it's not direct per se uh, gender based. But generally, me men are more masculine, yang orientated, mm. and we needed this diversity for for the humanity, because remember, you know, diversity means life. Eh? And so, for example, when we migrated from Africa up to and we come in, Come, came into Europe and then we had the, the huge Alps, big mountains. Then we had a lot of, you know, yin-oriented feminine type, mostly women, saying, uh, okay, let's stay here, you know, it's scary up there. And then we have a small percentage of young men that looked over to their mom and say, mom, can I please go up there and see what's <laughs> on the other side? Yeah. You know? And we have these adrenal junkies, you know, we have them in society, right. you know this ever restless men that cannot sit still mm. and this type of men that can have like 10 startups on their head and never get burned out you know because their their constitution they are like this you know but the, in our society today we're looking to this very small percentage as mm. the ones that actually becoming some and they are like doing something and saying oh, you the rest of your 95 percent you should be like them Right. But but it's just that they're very lucky that we have a social structure like this, mm. that they can perform as they do, you know. You see, the rest of the 95 does, doesn't have the right circumstances. They don't have the, the ideal body type and constitution in order to function like them. Right. So in this psychological becoming, which... In my unconscious belief that I'm not good enough, I develop a behavior in order to get approval from my parents, yeah. from my teachers, from my lecturers, from my boss, and so on, from the outside society. So, and obviously, because in the psychological becoming, then all of a sudden I am this person, and this person which is not good enough. So, my mind is always, my ego is pendling between the past and the future. Mm. So it's inevitable that um, I will be, all the time, I will be chronically stressed. Right. I am in the sympathetic part of my nervous system because I'm in the psychological becoming. And so it's inevitable for me not to have digestive problems. You see... The problem yeah. is so much bigger than what you should eat or not eat. Totally. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Because and, it's only yeah. when I'm in my, in my parasympathetic part of the nervous system, which the, the stomach can excrete, excrete uh, digestive juices, and mm. my, my liver can produce bile in order for me to have a good breakdown of the food, mm. and then can ac absorb, because we're not what we eat, we are what we can absorb. Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And we know that also that it all it takes only one instance of stress, of fear, of fight or flight to kill off millions of uh, good uh, gut bacteria. So it's not. Yeah. <laughs> and we're talking about this. It's over. There's a too much focus also on prebiotics. Yes.
how about not killing them in the first place? Mm. Yes. Right. <laughs> now, <laughs> if you have done proper uh, testing and see that you're lacking of the diversity, then you can try also probiotics. But it's much more important with prebiotics, which means the food that the bacteria needs in our gut in order f to thrive. Right. Yes. So, <clears throat> and I, as I said, there is not one diet, you know, there, mm. you need to figure out what is best for you according to the season and demographically where you live. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And Demat is going back a bit to this, you know, it's very interesting, this whole thing, because you say as well, it's so much bigger than just the diet, for example, and yes. this whole notion of, you know, be, you know, living your own truth, um, you know, listening to your own voice and these kind of things. So what are some things, you know, that people can do to try to work on that? Like working on, you know, <laughs> shutting out the external pressures and, and really just coming back to, to yourself. So the first step is to realize everything which you are not. Mm. So this inner voice that we hear all the time telling us that we're not good enough, that we should do more and do faster and, and so on, it's not our voice. This is my mom's voice, my dad's voice, my teacher's voice, this is the voice of the society and so on. But what, what have happened is that we have been indoctrinated into a type of way of thinking. And then we continue to self-indoctrinate ourselves mm -hmm. in the belief that I'm not good enough. So separating everything which I am not means that lifting up anything which I am re referring to as I. Mm -hmm. So when we say I, we're referring to something. And some people, they say, but I, my name, Diamantis. I say, okay, but... Is that you? Are you your name, or do you have a name? Mm. Say I have a name. Then it means that you are not your name. They say no, I'm not my name. I say okay. Let's start from the most material, going down to the most immaterial. Yep. How about the physical body? Do I have a body, or am I a body? Mm. Yes. And so, because we have identified with whatever we see in the mirror. That's why also uh, a lot of guys go into the mirror. They just work out things that they can see in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. So chest, shoulders, arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it's so true. <laughs> yes. So you see how ego-orientated that is. Yes, yeah. Yes, but unconsciously, you know, they don't know that they're doing this. Yes. And if I would tell a person like this, Oh, have you lost weight? You know, have you lost muscles? They take it very personally mm -hmm. because they've identified with the form of the body. Right. Yes. So what we need to understand is that this physical body, which is renewed every seven years, totally new body, mm. is something that we have because we refer as my hand. If it's my hand, it means I'm not the hand. Because if I'm in an accident and you choke no hand, then I will tell my friends, I lost my hand. Mm. Right? There's a distinction between the hand and me. Right. Yes. So if we agree then, and we're going a little bit fast because we don't have too much time. Mm. So we put even the, the name and the physical body, we put it aside. Right. And then we go to the sensory body. So we have smell, the sight, hearing, and listening and so on. And also, this instrument, the sensory instrument, is something we have in order to be able to experience the outside world. So some patients come to me and they say, Diamantis, I cannot hear. My hearing is gone. Mm. I say, it's right, it's your hearing. It doesn't belong, it belongs to you. You're not that. So even the sensory body, we are not there. We put it aside. And then we go to, we can go to the thoughts. People say, my thoughts are terrorizing me. And I say, yes, they're your thoughts. It means that you can observe your thoughts. And you are not your thoughts because the thoughts cannot exist independently from you. Mm. But you can exist independently from your thoughts. 
And we don't try to take away our thoughts. We just have a different kind of perspective towards the thoughts. Right. Yes. So even thoughts we are not. We put it aside. And then we have feelings, emotions, which is something also that rise up. We experience in that. And many times the ego have hijacked the whole endocrine system in order to create a reality for you to believe that our subjective way of seeing ourselves and the world is the objective one. Right. But it's not true. That's why I say it for men. And we know like women know this through the one time a month through PMS. Mm. You know, it's same circumstance, but different kind of feelings. And, you know, the smallest thing can make you go crazy. And it's not your fault because your hormones is upside down. Right. And so through this example, we can understand that even the hormone, even the, the feelings and the emotions, we are not. And lastly, we have memory. And through, mem through the memory is what we are referring to ourselves with I. So I, the ego, memory, past. Mm. But I cannot say I am my memory because I have memory. So if we put all this aside, and then we can ask ourselves then, who am I? Right? Mm. It's very, yeah. very common that this question arises. Yeah. Now, my experience is, is that I cannot know who I am. I can just be myself in the same way that a knife that can cut a million things, mm. but it cannot cut itself. Right. So from this, from, from this uh, position, I can just allow myself just to be mm. without identifying myself, without lip. Because every time I, limit, I identify myself, I also limit myself. Yeah. And then just allow myself to be. Right. And then it doesn't mean that I become like, you know, I don't have any willpower or, or I'm right. not driven to do anything. Sure. You know? It doesn't have to do. You know, I just say you, you don't confuse your dress with who is wearing your dress. Mm. Right. You know, you're not confusing the thoughts, who is there observing of thoughts. It's just this small thing, you know. Right. And you can be completely involved. You can have 10 startups, you know, mm -hmm. as long as you don't think that I will become something psychologically through right. these startups. Right. Yes. Because then I'm pendling between, between the past and the future. Mm. Right. And then I'm in parasympathetic. Yeah. Uh, sorry, sympathetic, fight or flight all the time. Right, right. Yes. And obviously it, it, it uh, affects my gut. Yeah. Because people today, we don't even have time to chew the food. Yes. We're <laughs> yeah. just swallowing, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I talk about that a lot as well. It's like this it, eating has become this thing that we just, you know, it's very easy to feel like, oh, I just need to kind of rush through that. So it's eating exactly. by the desk while you're working or exactly. while you're on the exactly. go. And it's such a like important but also simple thing. It's just like sitting down and chewing the food is a really good, <laughs> really yeah, good start. Is. Yeah, exactly. So we cannot eat while we're watching a, a, a screen of any sort mm. because then the body doesn't know that we are eating. Right. And eating is very sacred. It, yeah. it's, a holy, it's a holy moment, you know. Mm -hmm. What we're eating, we become. Yeah. You know, it, it's amazing if you think about it. So just just take time to really eat, you know. Mm. And because, <laughs> because we have been in fight or flight, m many of us throughout our life, then we have problem digesting the food. Right. So I'm recommending a lot of soups and a lot of stews. Mm. Because that, that breakdown have already started outside our stomach. Right. And then once we start eating, we chew very good, and then we eat it, uh, swallowing it, and then it's much easier for the stomach to continue the breakdown of the food. Right. Yeah, so just giving a little bit of like a helping hand to, to the gut. Exactly. In that sense. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So in Chinese medicine, 
So all this psychological becoming, all this mm. feeling of stress, irritation, frustration, and so on, it's stored in the organ of liver. Right. Yes. And not the, not the physical liver per se, but the energetic part, mm -hmm. mostly. Uh, and this is a metaphor when we say that the liver is attacking the stomach. What is referring to is the state of nervous system, which is the sympathetic part. Right. Yes. And obviously, we're not. If we cannot break down the food completely, then there is opportunistic bacteria in our gut, which is eating the food that mm -hmm. we cannot absorb, and then they're producing a byproduct, which is called. It's a gas. It's called put putrefaction. Mm. So it's easy to get swelled up and you yeah. have this stomach distension. And this is the characteristic uh, symptom in Chinese medicine when we say that you have your liver attacking the stomach and the stomach is weak. Mm. But what we are trying to do through acupuncture and herbs is that we are trying to balance the liver to let because it's stagnated, because our mind is stagnated in the past, mm. and so the liver gets stagnated. Right. And so we, we're trying to soothe the liver. We call it to soothe. So the circulation becomes easier. Right. And this, we could say that mo many of them are adaptogenic herbs. Mm. And adaptogenic means that hormones that are too low, bring them up. And hormones that are excessive or too much, bringing them down. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Got it. Yes. To, to find a balance. Yeah. And then with the stomach, what we're doing is that we're strengthening the stomach with herbs, different kind of, depending on, you know. We have so many herbs, and there are so many herbs for digestive problems, mm. but it, it's, def, it's actually upon, um, depending on very patient, which herbs and which dose of the herbs the patient needs. Yeah, makes sense. And it's very important also to understand that health is a dynamic thing. So dynamic means that if I treat a person, a patient, uh, one week and then they come to me next week, then I have to reevaluate which herbs and the treatment because, mm. you know, it's an ongoing thing. Everything is changing. You know. Right, right. So when it comes to herbs in pills and capsules, you know, that they can be good, you know, but... but it's so hard to know exactly which herbs are good for you because maybe your medicine will be my poison. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Makes total sense. Um, yes. Demats, I wanted to just go back. I know you mentioned this whole notion of the, the liver attacking the gut, like more in an in a energetic sort of way. Yes. Is yes. that also then related to, because I know, you know, IBS, it's such a like common diagnosis that people get so that whole thing with the liver attacking the gut is that also related to to ibs would you say definitely yeah i would say this this is more or less the manifestation of ibs because ibs stands for irritable bowel syndrome yeah whatever it's called syndrome it means that we have no idea what it why it's happening right yeah right and irritable and bowel irritable mm. is the feeling bowel is where Mm -hmm. and syndrome we have no idea right but it's under it's important to understand that this is a diagnosis made by the model which we call allopathic medicine mm. and only because this type of model does not have a, a proper understanding of the condition and don't ha doesn't have a proper treatment plan it doesn't mean that none of the other medical models don't mm. have right yes so, but it's very important to go to the doctor, you know, to exclude some uh, very serious conditions mm -hmm. uh, and then see what they're saying and then right. choose for you what type of treatment you would like to have. Right, right. Yeah. And Demandis, if when someone comes with IBS to you, what would be the first thing that you, that you start with, you know, to actually help that, that person? Yeah. So IBS, we can say it's a chronic condition. Mm. People have had it most likely more than three months. Then I tell them that your problem are biopsychosocial, which means that your biology is following your psychology, 
and your mental infrastructure if, is formed uh, according to the social circumstances that you grew up in. Right. And this is actually causing the problem. So, so I start to uh, with what I'm referring to I and all this what we already talked about. And then the basic principles of eating, you know, not looking into a, a screen and so on. <laughs> mm. And then <laughs> trying to educate them, you know, that also from a functional medicine part of, point of view, we know that when we are in a fight or flight, then we are consuming ourselves and we are paying that extra energy with our vitamins and minerals. Right. So mostly, you know, all our B vitamins are gone. And we know that for the liver is B vitamin B6 mm. is an amazing vitamin. Right. That also can be good when it comes to digestive health because it helps also with creating the, the gastric juices in the stomach. It helps also with the movement of the, the intestines. Yeah. But the interesting part, uh, Anna, is that if you ask many people, especially uh, girls and women that have IBS, if they have also problem with their menstruation, mm. most likely they will say they have. Right. Because guess what? Vitamin B6 is very important for the liver in order to metabolize estrogen. Right. The liver metabolizes up to 80% of your estrogen. If the liver is stagnated and if the liver has deficiency of vitamin B6 and you cannot metabolize the estrogen, then you'll be estrogen dominant. And then you will have so the different kind of ratio between your hormones will be uneven, mm -hmm. imbalanced. And then you will experience that through menstruation. Right. But the Chinese, in Chinese medicine, they knew this, you know, a thousand years ago, because they say that the liver blood supplies the uterus with blood. Mm -hmm. And I, I was thinking, what does the liver has to do with the uterus? So this is this is the answer actually, mm -hmm. and I just found it, you know, couple just one two years ago, you know. Right. That, yeah. So it already it has such a big importance when it comes to uh, menstruation, which in Sweden, you know, I just looked at the statistics, and mm. between sixteen and twenty-four year old girls, ninety percent have menstruation problems. Yeah, it's a huge a lot, number. Yeah, you know? it is. It's a scary number. Yeah. And that only tells us, you know, that we collectively, you know, we are doing something wrong. Right, right. So if there is a pandemic, a real pandemic, then it is the psychological becoming, which is making yeah. us sick. Yeah. And is the root cause of, all, of I don't know if I could say all the problems, all the chronic problems, but I would say the majority of mm. all the chronic problems. This is why it's so important to look at health through holistic perspective. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because I think it's also, it's very easy to, especially when it comes to food, to just turn to that. And I also have people coming, you know, to me and saying, oh, I'm eating super healthy. I'm doing all the right things, what I'm supposed to eat, but I'm still having a lot of digestive issues. I'm not feeling exactly. good. Because they exactly. isolated <laughs> to only exactly. look at, at the diet. So that makes total sense that you also need to look at all these other aspects because i also exactly. feel like if you're not if you're not living your own truth and you're not kind of following your own path that's very stressful in itself it's always going to be this nagging <laughs> feeling that exactly. you have that something isn't right and that's yes. gonna your body will try to communicate that somehow exactly and then people would try to they, they will flu, you know, they will turn mm. to sugar, they will turn to junk food because the mental infrastructure becomes too heavy and too cl complex, yep. their subjective reality. Right. So they'll try to ease all these feelings and all this psychological pain mm. through fast food and through sugar or through alcohol and so on. Right. And so because people tell to me, yes, I need to be disciplined in my diet. And I say, no, I don't want you to be disciplined. I mm -hmm. don't want you to fight. I don't want you... Because discipline means this. 
I spontaneously want to eat a bag of uh, candy, but I should eat a fruit salad. So I'm disciplining myself and I'm forcing myself to eat this fruit salad. And while I'm eating the fruit salad, I'm thinking of the bag of candy I actually want to eat. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It, it, it's not a sustainable way to live, you know? It's not... Right. It, it doesn't feel good. Instead, you know, lift the question, why do does the mind unconsciously want to go there? Right. You know? And there might be, you know, either you have a, a mineral imbalance like a deficiency of chromium and you mm -hmm. don't have a good blood sugar balance, so the body is craving fast sugar. You might have too many parasites and bacteria that are craving sugar mm. that is signaling to you that you are mistaking that you actually want sugar, but <laughs> no, actually your parasites want sugar. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Thirdly, uh, you are emotionally remember unconsciously that your aunt that you loved so much every saturday she was coming home with a bag of candy to you right and so you have this relationship because it reminds you somehow of that of that situation yeah so it's really kind of getting to the going back to that whole idea of getting to the to the root cause like understanding where it actually comes from so you can heal from from there exactly and yeah. have a good relationship with food right right um diamant is super interesting so we don't have that much time left but i just had um a final question oh diamant can you still hear me oh let me see Diamantis. All right, guys. So I'm just going to see if we can get him back. All right. If you guys can still hear me, feel free to just give a little <laughs> comment in, in the comment box. And I'm going to see if we can get... Diamant is back on again. Let me just see. Yeah, this is always working. Okay, let me see. This is always what can happen when it is live. <laughs> it's just how it is. Let me just see here. Um, okay, so we'll see if we can have him come back. <laughs> if you guys have any questions feel free to drop I'm gonna see if we have any time uh, but either way if you have any questions drop them there if we don't have time to go through it now um, we I'm sure we'll do a, a follow-up soon I hope we can do that um, so then we can just bring it up then um, but I'm just gonna see <laughs> Okay, let me just see here. Da, da, da. <laughs> Diamantis, are you back with us? <laughs> I think maybe the connection is a little bit choppy. Let me just see here. Can you hear me, guys? Yes, we can hear you. I think it's just a picture. It's a little bit, but it doesn't matter. I think we can hear you fine now. <laughs> okay, good. Yes. Sorry, guys, my computer. I just told them, like, that. that's what happens when it's live. Like, these kind of things can happen. <laughs> it's yeah. just like getting back and do it again. <laughs> um, but, yeah, but, Demons, I know we don't have that much time left, but I had... A final question that I know um, I got this question from from many people from my community so I just wanted to get your input on it and it's sure. you know the kind of relationship between gut health and fertility like are they two are the two linked and you know how, how are they linked in in that case yes both of them are very important they can only work when the nervous system is in the parasympathetic part 
So I have a lot of patients that come to me with infertility, for example. Mm. And I just say, you know, you, you cannot force your body to, to get pregnant, you know. It will become by itself when you are ready, when the body is ready and the body can only function when you are here and now, when you are in your parasympathetic part of the nervous system. Right. So this is the most important. And then we touched a little bit on the, the liver, which is connected both to the stomach, mm -hmm. but also to the uterus and the hormones. Right. And then obviously, you know, it's most of the times it starts with uh, a digestive issue where you cannot absorb your nutrients as you should. Mm. And then later on, you know, the body tries to compensate all the time, but it's running out of nutrients in order to create and balance this different kind of hormones. Right. And then later on, your period will be, uh, will be affected. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, so I feel like everything, I mean, everything we've talked about today is really kind of coming down to not only looking at things in isolation, but there are so many different like puzzle pieces that kind of play in like everything from obviously the food and how we look at that, but also, you know, we talked about this notion of um, like becoming and instead focusing on getting back to, to yourself and this whole understanding of being enough. And I know you also mentioned that, of course, you can have drive, you can have a business and all these kind of things, but not attaching maybe your, your um, like, um, internal, exactly, identity and, like, um, self-worth to that. Like, you're, you're still going to have the same value <laughs> regardless if you do that or if you don't do that. Um, amazing. Demet, is this, the time just flew by. <laughs> it's so many, but that's how it is when it's so many interesting and fascinating things to, to talk about. But just on a, on a final note, if, if people want to, to check you out more or get in, in touch with you, like what's, what's the best way to, to do that? Uh, you can do this uh, through my website, which is Dr. Diamantis and Dr. with a C, mm -hmm. or through my Instagram, which is also Dr. Diamantis with a C. Right. Awesome. I'll just drop that in the in the description below so people can go in and check that out. Um, well, Diamantis, thank you so much for, for doing this and for sharing so many golden nuggets. So okay. uh, <laughs> thank you for, for taking the time. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, and thanks guys for being here. Yes. Take care, everyone.